Chapter 5 Richard held back the boughs of the tree. This is a wayward pine, he announced, friend to any traveler. It was dark inside. Kalin held the boughs aside so that he could see through the moonlight to strike steel on flint and start a fire. Clouds scuttled across the moon, and they could see their breath in the cold air. Richard had stayed here before on trips to and from Zed's, and had made a small campfire pit of stones. There was dry wood, and to the far side a stack of dry grass they had used for bedding. Since he didn't have his knife, he was thankful he had a supply of tinder. The fire was quickly started, filling the interior of the tree's skirt with flickering light. Richard was not quite able to stand under the branches where they began growing out from the trunk. The branches were bare near the trunk, with needles on the ends, leaving a hollow interior. The lower branches dipped all the way to the ground. The tree was fire-resistant, as long as one was careful. The smoke from the small fire curled up the center near the trunk. The needles grew so thick that even a good rain, it would remain dry inside. Richard waited out many rain inside of a wayward pine. He always enjoyed staying in the small but cozy shelters as he traveled the heartland. Now he was especially glad for its concealing shelter. Before their encounter with the long-tailed gar, there had been plants and animals in the forest that he had strong respect for, but there had been nothing in the woods that he feared. Kaylin sat herself down cross-legged in front of him. She was still shivering and kept the blanket over her head formed into a hood, and held tightly up around her chin. I never heard of wayward pines before. I'm not used to staying in the woods when I travel, but they look like a wonderful place to sleep. She looked even more tired than he. When was the last time you slept? Two days ago, I think. It has all become a blur. Richard was surprised she could keep her eyes open. When they were running from the quad, he'd barely been able to keep up with her. It was her fear that pushed her on, he knew. Why so long? It would be very unwise, she said to go to sleep in the boundary. Kaylin watched the fire, spellbound in its warm embrace, the light from it flickering on her face. She loosened the blanket from around her chin and let it hang so she could put her hands out to warm them closer to the fire. A chill ran through them when he wondered what was in the boundary and what would happen if you slept there. Hungry? She nodded her head. Richard dug around his pack, retrieving a pot and went outside to fill it in a pool of water at a brook that they passed a short distance back. Sounds of the night filled the air. It was so cold it felt as if it might break if he wasn't careful. Once again he cursed himself for leaving home without his forest cloak, among other things. The memory of what had been waiting for him at his house made him shiver all the more. Every bug that looped past made him recoil in fear that it was a blood fly, and several times he froze in mid-step, only to exhale in relief when he saw it was only a snowy tree cricket or a moth or a lacewing. Shadows melted and materialized as clouds passed in front of the moon. He didn't want to, but he looked up anyways. Stars twinkled off and back on the soft gauze-like clouds that moved across the sky, all except one which did not move. Cold to the bone, he came back in and put the pot of water on the fire, balancing it on three stones. Richard started to sit across from her, but then changed his mind and sat next to her, telling himself it was because he was so cold. When she heard his teeth chattering, she put half the blanket around his shoulders, letting her half slip from her head and go down her shoulders as well. The blanket, heated by her body, felt good around Richard, and he sat quietly, letting the warmth soak in. I've never seen anything like a gar. The Midlands must be a dreadful place. There are many dangers in the Midlands, a wistful smile came over her face. There are also many fantastic and magical things. It is a beautiful, wondrous place. But the Gar are not from the Midlands. They are from Dahara. He stared in astonishment. Dahara? From across the second boundary? Dahara. Until his brother's speech today, he would never heard the name spoken in anything other than cautious whispers of older people, or in a curse. Kaylin continued to watch the fire. Richard, she paused as if afraid to tell him the rest. There is no longer a second boundary. The boundary between the Midlands and Dahara is down since the spring.